Ten crimes have been committed. One British Army soldier murdered on the streets of Woolwich, two little girls snatched away from their families, and an unsolved murder of a television presenter baffling detectives to this very day. Join me as we explore. One murder at a time through the shadows of true crime. In the quiet town of Alton, England in the year 1867, a tragic tale unfolded centered around a young girl named Fanny Adams. At just eight years old, Fanny's journey to visit her sister took a harrowing turn. She vanished without a trace, sparking a frantic search by her worried family and the townsfolk. The following day, a grim discovery shattered the tranquility of the fields. Pieces of Fanny's tiny body were found scattered, a sight that stirred sorrow and outrage among the community. Soon the eyes of suspicion fell upon a man named Frederick Baker, who had been seen with Fanny before she disappeared. Possessing some of her belongings, Baker became the primary suspect in this dreadful mystery. The town's whispers turned into courtroom drama as Baker faced trial. Though found guilty of the atrocious crime, his punishment shifted from death to life imprisonment due to uncertainties about his mental state. The sorrowful fate of Fanny Adams left an indelible mark, leading to the adoption of the phrase Sweet Fanny Adams in the English language, symbolizing something of little worth, or in simpler terms, nothing at all. This heart-wrenching incident prompted a deep reflection on child safety and vigilance within communities. In 1953, near Teddington Lock in London, two girls, Barbara and Christine, were tragically murdered while cycling by the river. Alfred Whiteway was accused and said the evidence against him was made up by the police. The trial had a sharp investigation, and even though Whiteway denied involvement, a hidden axe and a disputed confession led to his conviction. Barbara's body was found in the river, and Christine's was discovered later. They had been hurt, badly, with a hatchet. Whiteway, who was already in trouble for other crimes, had his shoes and an axe with traces of blood, but forensic tests couldn't fully link them to the murders. During the trial, there were arguments about the evidence, especially a confession that Whiteway claimed was written on a blank paper. Despite this, the jury found him guilty, and even his appeal was turned down. He was hanged in December 1953. This case raised questions about police methods and still holds a place in history. During the 1970s and 1980s, fear gripped the streets of Yorkshire as a series of brutal attacks on women unfolded. Peter Sutcliffe, the notorious Yorkshire Ripper, terrorised communities, targeting and assaulting multiple women. His spree involved using hammers and knives, inflicting horrific injuries and leading to the deaths of 13 women. Sutcliffe's reign of terror instilled fear and panic among women in the region. Despite police investigations and the largest manhunt in British criminal history, Sutcliffe managed to evade capture for several years. The case caused widespread public anxiety, with communities on edge due to the unpredictability of the attacks. It wasn't until 1981 that Peter Sutcliffe was apprehended and ultimately convicted. His arrest brought relief to the affected communities and marked the end of the Yorkshire Ripper's gruesome spree. Sutcliffe's trial and subsequent imprisonment marked the resolution of the case bringing justice to the victims and their families. In the year 1973, a haunting tale unfolded in Worcester, England involving David McGreevy. This chilling story revolves around a deeply distressing event where McGreevy, a trusted friend and lodger, committed an unthinkable crime. He horrifically took the lives of three innocent children, 
Paul Ralph, aged four, Dawn Ralph, aged two, and Samantha Ralph, aged nine months, in their own home. McGreevy didn't stop there. He committed unspeakable acts that shocked the entire community, leaving everyone horrified by the brutality of his actions. Despite his arrest and admission of guilt during the trial, McGreevy couldn't offer a clear reason for his ghastly deeds, leaving many questioning the motives behind such a tragic and senseless crime. This tragic incident earned McGreevy the notorious moniker Monster of Worcester. Even after receiving a life sentence, this disturbing case continues to raise discussions and debates of an individual that left a lasting scar on the community and the memory of those innocent young lives lost. The gruesome events at White House Farm in 1985 shook the quiet town of Essex to its core. Jeremy Bamber, at the centre of this chilling tale, was accused of a heinous crime that claimed the lives of his adoptive family members in a night of unspeakable horror. And the victims, Neville and June Bamber, Jeremy's adoptive parents, his sister Sheila Caffell, and her innocent six-year-old twin boys, Daniel and Nicholas, were found brutally murdered. The haunting crime scene painted a grim picture of violence and tragedy, as each victim had been shot to death in a manner that sent shockwaves through the community. Initially, Jeremy Bamber claimed that an intruder was responsible, attempting to distance himself from the ghastly scene. However, meticulous scrutiny of the evidence revealed inconsistencies in his story, leading the investigation to focus intensely on Bamba himself. Despite vehemently asserting his innocence, mounting evidence pointed directly to his involvement in the murders. Following a highly scrutinized trial, Jeremy Bamba was convicted and sentenced to spend the rest of his life behind bars. However, despite the legal resolution, the case continues to evoke controversy and debate. Questions persist, and some believe that there might be more to the tragic events than what was presented in court, contributing to ongoing speculation and discussion surrounding this haunting and tragic event at White House Farm. Stephen Lawrence was a bright, promising 18-year-old student with dreams of pursuing a career in architecture. He was from Eltham, southeast London, and was described by family and friends as a kind, ambitious young man. On April 22, 1993, while waiting for a bus with his friend Duane Brooks, Stephen was brutally attacked by a group of white youths in a racially motivated assault. The attack was a senseless act of racism that tragically cut short Stephen's aspirations. His murder became a watershed moment in the fight against racial injustice in the UK. His parents, Doreen and Neville Lawrence, fought tirelessly for justice, despite facing numerous challenges, including police mishandling and institutional racism. After a lengthy and complex legal battle, Gary Dobson and David Norris were finally convicted of Stephen's murder almost two decades after the fatal attack. Stephen's legacy remains a symbol of the ongoing struggle against racism and the pursuit of justice for victims of hate crimes. Jill Dando was a well-known and beloved British television presenter, recognized for her work on popular programs such as Crime Watch and Holiday. She was admired for her professionalism, warmth, and dedication to her career. Jill was described as gracious, friendly, and deeply committed to her work in journalism. On April 26, 1999, outside her home in Fulham, London, Jill Dando was tragically murdered in a shocking and brutal attack. Her sudden and untimely death shocked the nation, leaving a void in the media industry and among her colleagues. Jill's murder captured the public's attention, leading to an extensive investigation and an outpouring of tributes to her life and career. Despite exhaustive efforts by law enforcement and numerous inquiries, the case remained unresolved. 
The motive behind Jill Dando's murder remains a mystery, leaving many unanswered questions and speculations regarding the identity and reasons behind her killing. Lee Rigby was a soldier in the British Army born in 1987. He served as a drummer and machine gunner in the 2nd Battalion of the Royal Regiment of Fusiliers. Rigby dedicated himself to his military duties, having served in Cyprus, Germany and Afghanistan. He was known for his dedication to helping others and supporting charitable causes, notably endorsing the British Armed Forces charity Help for Heroes. Rigby was a father, engaged to be married, fell victim to a brutal attack by two men near Woolwich, shaking the city to its core. They struck him with a car and inflicted grievous injuries using knives. The community was deeply saddened and disturbed by this distressing event. The murderers stayed at the scene expressing their motive as a desire for revenge due to Muslim lives lost at the hands of the British military. Prompt police intervention resulted in the apprehension of the attackers, who were later hospitalized due to injuries sustained during their arrest. Lee Rigby, a compassionate soldier with a history of service in various locations, was a father and engaged to be married when this terrible tragedy occurred. The profound loss of Lee Rigby profoundly impacted many, leading to a significant outpouring of grief. His memory was honored through a poignant funeral and the establishment of memorials, ensuring his legacy of bravery and selfless service endures. This distressing event prompted reflections on compassion and the valor of those like Lee Rigby, who dedicate themselves to protecting others. In 2002, the disappearance of Holly Wells and Jessica Chapman Two vibrant ten-year-old girls from Soham, Cambridgeshire, sent shockwaves across the nation. The girls went missing on August 4th, triggering a massive search operation involving the community and law enforcement agencies. Tragically, the search ended in heartbreak when the bodies of Holly and Jessica were discovered near an airbase almost two weeks later. Post-mortem examinations revealed that both girls had died from asphyxiation the devastating news shook the community to its core, leaving everyone in mourning and disbelief. The investigation led to the arrest of Ian Huntley, a school caretaker, and his girlfriend, Maxine Carr. Huntley was charged and found guilty of the girl's murders in December 2003. His conviction brought closure to the case and served as a testament to the collaborative efforts of law enforcement and the community in seeking justice for Holly Wells and Jessica Chapman. The tragic loss of Holly Wells and Jessica Chapman left a profound void in the hearts of many, touching the lives of countless individuals. Their memory continues to be a beacon of hope, reminding us of the importance of compassion, unity and unwavering support for one another. May their bright spirits live on in our hearts, and may their families find solace in the love and cherished memories they hold. In 2010, a series of shocking events unfolded in Cumbria, a picturesque county in England, shattering the tranquility of the peaceful region. Derek Bird, a taxi driver with no history of violence, embarked on a rampage that left a devastating trail of tragedy and loss. Starting in the early morning of June 2nd, Bird began a shooting spree that spanned multiple locations across West Cumbria. He indiscriminately targeted innocent people, including passers-by and fellow taxi drivers, using firearms to unleash senseless violence upon the community. Over the course of several hours, Bird took the lives of 12 people and injured many others before his final act, taking his own life. The motives behind Derek Bird's actions remained elusive, as there was no clear explanation or discernible cause for his heinous acts. Law enforcement agencies conducted thorough investigations to understand what led to this tragic event. Yet Bird's death meant that many questions remained unanswered. 